Good evening and thank you for joining us. My name is Chrissy and I would like to welcome you to our virtual event series. Tonight we'll be discussing billions of besties with author and illustrator Susie Ahrens and Peggy Panache. I'd like to begin with a little housekeeping. This evening I will be in conversation with the authors and will then moderate the question and answer portion of the event. You may submit your questions for the authors by clicking on ask a question which is located at the bottom of your screen. If you're watching on a phone or tablet you can click on the icon that has a little question mark in it. If you would like to buy a copy of Billions of Besties from the Doyle's Town Bookshop you can click the button on your screen that says buy the book here, purchase the book here. Um, you can also, it's right down there, you can also interact with us through the chat box on your screen if you'd like to tell us where you're viewing from uh, or just leave any comments for us. Um, I'm going to tell you now a little bit about our guest this evening. Peggy Pinash has carved a unique dual career path as both a highly respected marketing expert and illustrator with more than 30 years in media and entertainment. Peggy has worked with some prolific celebrities from Howard Stern to Oprah and on world-renowned events from the Grammys to the Super Bowl. Her illustration captures the heart and spirit of people, places, and moments that touch her soul. In fact, if you look very closely at her drawings, you'll find a teeny little heart in each one of them. Peggy's illustrations have been seen on CBS Sunday Morning, and she was a featured artist at Soho House's Ludlow House in New York City. She splits her time between Brooklyn, New York, and Madison, Wisconsin. Susie Nair Ahrens is a strategic communications advisor working with some of the most recognized names in entertainment, lifestyle, and media. She has honed her writing skills, penning billions of messages throughout her 30-year career. Some people might say she also has been a professional bestie to some of the besties in the business, including Netflix, HBO, Marlo Thomas, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, A24, Refinery21, The Hunger Games, BMW, Focus Features, and many, 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 many more. <laughs> including, I have to mention, the Radio City Christmas Spectacular and the Tribeca Film uh, Festival, inspired every day by her colleagues or poolside with her treasured circle of friends and family, Susie learned early to lead with heart, be smart, and always keep the joy. Hello, ladies, and thank you for joining me this evening. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I have got to cut that down. Oh, man. And I cut them both down a little bit. <laughs> but they're just so impressive. I mean, how can you cut that? I mean, you oh, know. <laughs> how are you both doing? Uh, great. Susie, I am totally jamming on your sweater. Oh, it's very chic. Tray chic? It's very Tray chic. chic. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, I'm very excited to be uh, speaking with you about billions of besties this evening. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'll go into our first question here. And uh, it's very simple. What was your intention when you set out to create this book together? Well, Peggy, I think that you should take that question. <laughs> Susie and I have a really hard time having fun. We never laugh. Obviously. Yeah. No. So we, <laughs> our intention was we um, we wanted to create something that we had not done. We wanted to do something we had not done before. So we both had these very rich careers, and we've been very fortunate to do really amazing things with really amazing people and companies and all that kind of stuff. And so we we're both sort of on parallel paths in trying to uh, push ourselves creatively and see, you know, what else we could do. I was actually on my way to Susie's house, driving to Susie's house um, to go hang out at her pool. So for those of you um, who are on this, what you want is an invitation to Susie's <laughs> house to hang out at the pool. So I would, I would highly recommend like chatting her up and work with making that happen. In the chat box. It's quite fabulous. Anyway, so I was driving on, I was listening to 
in an interview that Beatty Feldstein was doing in NPR, and she was talking about studying friendships for the movie Booksmart. And mm -hmm. I was thinking about it, I thought, wow, you know, really, I was thinking about different friendships and, you know, like, uh, you know, Rhoda and Mary and Lucy and Ethel and Thelma and Louise, my friendship with Susie and my friendship with other friends, my sisters and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, by the time I walked into Susie's house, you know, I was like mid-sentence, which is kind of how we, you know, when we see each other, it's like, you know, that. And um, we kind of took it from there. And because she was in mid-sentence, I had to jump into the, into the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I grabbed a pen, a pen and a pad <laughs> so I could catch up. And at the time, we didn't think about writing a book. We were just talking. And um, we also noticed that the pool wasn't open yet. My husband had failed to uh, get that going. He was doing another task. He'd gotten diverted. So we sat by the pool. And at that time, then decided maybe we maybe we should just keep thinking of all these, these friendships. And we just had reams and reams and reams of paper of all these different friendships. And, and at that point, thought, well, we should write a book. How do you write a book? I don't know. How do you write a book? And, and you, you know, we were very intentional about what we wanted the vibe of the yeah. book to be. Like we wanted it to be, you know, positive and funny and delightful and um, interesting. You know, it, it, and, and we wanted to explore what that magic was. What was it that that alchemy that made brought people together, kept them together, was the spark. And we, when we kept coming up with all these different friendships, they were from different time periods and categories. And so that was something that we then committed to. We said we had these, this North Star and we never were going to, to uh, vary from the North Star. And that was the intentional from start to finish, to write this second. And, and, and also, you know, neither of us, I had, I only started drawing about three years ago. And mm -hmm. uh, so I wasn't even, you know, like the last time I really did anything artistic was probably in high school. And that wasn't that long ago. I'm exaggerating. It was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> but, um, and it, it was, Sus this was the first time Susie had done this kind of writing. Um, so it was also fun to see, like, you know, it was fun for me to challenge myself and see what I could do. And that was, that was fun and terrifying <laughs> and, and unbelievable. Um, but, you know, we were fortunate in that we could support each other. And the thing that was really yeah. nice was that friendship intersected throughout the entire project because once we then committed, uh, we reached out to other friends and and asked them, "What what are you what what friends come to mind? What do you think of when you think of friendships?" And so people poured in with ideas, and and it was things we hadn't thought of. It was different foods that were friends. It was uh, fictional friends, and we had thought of characters and you know movie characters and and television characters, but it really, the, it expanded. And then Peggy's very dear friend, Jen, introduced her to a good friend who happened to be um, this wonderful lady named T Teresa DeMossi, who just happened to work at a, uh, at a publishing house, a tiny, tiny little publishing house called Simon and Schuster. <laughs> <laughs> and Peggy happened to meet Teresa. And then present, oh, you know, we have this idea, these couple of ideas about books. And so Teresa invited us to present the ideas and she said, yes, <laughs> I like those ideas. And <laughs> next thing we knew, we were writing a book. <laughs> and you know, we, so this, the book, 
We got the green light last like August. Well, oh, okay. <laughs> we we um it was right, right after the US Open because we had to finish writing the book proposal. Um we gave up our Serena Williams tickets in order to um finish writing the book proposal. <laughs> she said yes, and then um we both, you know, we both <laughs> we started working on the book. And um, Susie has a full-time job. She's the president of a big PR firm. And I was at that time on just starting up to do a nine city arena tour with Oprah. So we were doing it on like airplanes and hotel rooms and, and then COVID hit. And um, so we actually um, in March, April and May, is when I did a lot of the illustrating and we really put a, really put the production part of the book together. And again, we had never written a book <laughs> or drawn a book. So we had these big graph papers and had to lay things out into little boxes and count words and meet with editors, but it it wasn't the, you know, Jackie Kennedy meeting with your editor over lunch at Michael's or wherever editors and people meet. We were doing it on the phone and every morning at 7.30, Peggy and I were on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though, you know, there was a, a generosity. So like with the art directors that we worked with and um, our editors, um, and and Teresa, the publisher, you know, they were very, uh, and you know, uh, they were very generous in sort of guiding us through the process. And um, what I would, you know, recommend to anybody is, you know, we we followed a dream, and we we, we made up the dream. We, you know, we crafted the dream. We asked about the dream, and you know, we. We put ourselves out there and we had the good fortune that Teresa said yes, and um, we could make this happen. But, you know, we went for it. We and we we truly didn't know what we were doing. But, you know, I think what we have created is a body of work that is really beautiful and delightful and positive. And it sort of brings together all of those good vibes, and that energy that we really need now. Yes. Um, and uh, it is, um, you know, reviews have been really great. We are actually had the good fortune that we are in. Ready, Suze? The December issue of Oprah Magazine. So we're in the favorite things issue. We're not, a, we're on the style page. Wow. Of favorite things, but page 72, maybe. <laughs> it's on page 72. <laughs> and for those of you who are not familiar with Adam Glassman, who has the best hair in mm. all of magazine industry and the best taste. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that's pretty amazing. It's one of my favorite things in the December issue <laughs> of Oprah Magazine. Yes. Oh my goodness. So well, like that <coughs> that uh, brings us to our second question, which is how did you choose and research the besties that you added to your book? The selection process was delightfully arduous <laughs> because we had about 500 pairs and squads and trios and we needed to, uh, we needed to condense them to about a hundred. And then we had to then we had to also fit into this formula of um, one pages and two pages. So we had to do a little bit more refining and editing. Um, so 
we selected based on the on the research and, and research in, in doing the research. So that process was also it was fun, but it was it was uh, much more intensive, and it was the sad when we had to pe put people into the parking lot. Uh, and well, the, explain what a parking lot is. Well, the parking lot is when uh, when people. Uh, are so excited about uh, purchasing billions of besties for their besties for Friendsgiving and gifting and Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day and 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 uh, you know taking it for you know no party hostess gifts etc. They they bought so they bought so many books that we have to go to volume two. We will bring <laughs> them back into volume two out of the parking lot. They're just sitting there for a, a little bit. And then they will come into volume two and and that's they're just setting for a bit just a bit okay. <laughs> um, but the research uh was really i i we researched and i had i made a commitment that we had to follow journalistic standards so ha we had to have even on stories that we knew um had to have at least two corroborating sources of and and uh, uh, places of real research and new, not not just hearsay, but uh, real news and real information. Um, I will say that the Hunter Thompson, Pat Buchanan story did not uh, pass muster with the uh, legal department. They thought that was so unlikely that it, that they, those two would be friends, best, best friends that I actually had five sources of, wow. of uh, corroborated uh, uh, proof that they were best friends. And it proves that you can be very far apart in your philosophy and your thinking and your um, way of life, but still can can respect one another and respect one another's beliefs and, and, and be best friends. So um, that's what we did. And then the illustration process required research. It wasn't just the writing. Sure. And yeah, so I, you know, the same way, you know, we knew, you know, the direction that we wanted to go. So the images, you know, I uh, looked at photos and video from film and TV and photo archives. Um, you know, to capture the people that we're um, showcasing in moments that are memorable and um, kind of warm your heart, you know, they touch your soul. Um, and also that, that are fun. You know, we really wanted, you know, we really wanted to thread that throughout as well. And we didn't, we didn't do it in any particular order. So Peggy would show me illustrations and those would inspire me. And so when I was doing my research, it also then inspired the writing. And um, so it wasn't done in a particular order, which I do think drove the editors a little bit crazy. They would have preferred if we handed things in, you know, chapter one, you know, entry one through it, and it, it, it didn't work quite like that. Um, right. but they were very sweet and they were very uh, patient with us. Well, that's good. <laughs> so you talked about um, Hunter Thompson and Pat Buchanan a bit, um, and including them, did you find any surprises with the friendships that you looked into, including them and, um, you know, like uh, RBG and, and Scalia, couples, not couples, friends, friends with that type of relationship. What did you find when you looked there? I, you know, I think when, I think Marilyn Monroe and Ella Fitzgerald's friendship is really amazing. Um, and how Marilyn Monroe really supported and helped Ella Fitzgerald. Aww. Um, uh, in in you know such a, a, a loving and support and um, great way, um, you know I think um, there are a bunch. You know I think the RBG and Antonin Scalia is 
special. I think actually think that whole un unexpected chapter is really beautiful, especially now because there's so many people in it that are so different. You know, what they believe in is different. Their values are different. Yet they can come together in, you know, an affectionate, mutually respectful way. And, you know, even with those differences, really um, enjoy a, a wonderful relationship with each other. And we we also, the, the one of the surprising ones with, is the Chris Jenner, Jennifer Lawrence uh, friendship because you would think Chris Jenner is surrounded by all of her children that that would be enough input from that age group and mm -hmm. Jennifer Lawrence would wh why would she be friends with someone that's her mom's age but they really <laughs> became friends and it was such a funny story when we when I was doing the research, I didn't believe it, and then I believed it, and they really are friends. And I, we just thought it was so it was so delightful, and it was so funny. So we had to include it. Yeah. We had to include it, and and Peggy was so determined to get it right. She did, I think, three or four wardrobe changes. She worked so hard on it. It was that in settling on the final uh, look was, that was a very important decision. <laughs> yeah, and also too, you know, I draw everything by hand. So I don't use computers, it, you know, I'm, I kick it old school with like micron pens and watercolor um, and watercolor pen and ink. So <laughs> changing, you know, it's like, okay, well, I'll start all that over. That is real, <laughs> making a change is real. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, Susie, a question for you. Are there certain origin stories that you love to write? In, in the book, um, I, in the, I would have to just go in the book because I don't typically write origin stories because this is my very first uh, creative endeavor other than my fourth grade autobiography. And that origin story is true. It's riveting. Uh, <laughs> riveting. Uh, and, uh, but I think that, I think the, the historical ones were meaningful and I'm, I get a little geeky about those. So the Helen Keller, Mark Twain one drew me in. I could have just continued to write that. So I, I, the, some of the uh, the political ones, you know, I could have just sat all day and read Martin Luther King and, and John Lewis, and uh, I did have a I did have the the honor of having dinner with Congressman Lewis, and that's like one of those memorable moments. Um, the some the heartbreaking story with uh, Edie Windsor and Anthea, which is uh, they they got married in just in time. So just some of those really heartfelt stories, which I think anybody would. And then just some of the funny ones, you know, the Samuel Jackson could just get up and say hello and you know, <laughs> just crack up. I can't look at Mel Brooks without seeing my dad, but hearing Carl Reiner's voice, then then I'm just, I just start watching old tapes. So, you know, those are, those, those are just wonderful. And then I want to be cool to my kids. So, you know, I have to, Miley, Ariana, and they're like, oh, mom. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we have to be cool to our kids. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll just, probably never happen but exactly. like, oh, God. stop mom just stop, just stop. <laughs> and um peggy in this book were there uh illustrations ones that you love more than others i'm sure it's impossible to choose um there were that, were, that i love more than others but they're uh you know the oprah and gail packs a lot of meaning because i've worked with them both Oprah, especially for so many years. Um, the I loved I love Bill Murray. I'm a super fan, so that one is um, 
the David Letterman and Bill Murray is super meaningful. Um, I love Steel Magnolias. I love that movie. Um, Iris yes. Apple is like, I had the good fortune of meeting her actually earlier this year. And she is just, she's amazing. So, and she's, I, she was actually one of, when I first started drawing, she is one of the first people that I drew. Really? That was like three years ago. So I, um, yeah, so that one I, I really love. Um, Your fashion game is um, is so amazing. The Christian Siriano, Janelle Monet dress, the Billy Porter, uh, beautiful dress. Your the Beyonce the the boots. I mean, your, your fashion game is spot on. Yeah, thank you. Got you. It. You got it. Also, you know, like Bowie, a lot of the, you know, oh. Prince. Um, I drew Prince in the the outfit he wore when he performed at the Super Bowl when it was like pouring down rain. And, um, you know, I love drawing David Bowie. I love drawing Cindy Lauper. And like Susie said, Billy Porter was fun. RuPaul and Michelle oh. Visage are su <laughs> were super fun to draw. Um and you know what else was fun? The toys. You know, like, you know, Buzz Lightyear and Woody and Winnie the Pooh and Christopher Robin. Those were really fun. And also when we, you know, when we worked on that part, that was during COVID. And that was just like so warm. And, you know, we were fortunate because we could really get lost in this project at a time when, you know what, it was helpful. And then when SpongeBob came out and you added the flag, you added you added the pride flag. Mm -hmm. And we had already we had already turned in our final manuscript and Peggy said, time out. Time well, out. We both did. We were like, hey, well, no. I can't draw. And we went back and we rewrote the we rewrote this the anthem, but like Got to, got to, got to, got to get in there, guys. <laughs> wow. You know what else was a fun one? And partly because um, I, it was fun drawing Marla Thomas and Gloria Stein. And because I like respect them both so much. Susie knows Marlo very well and has met Gloria. We just sent them the originals. So um, the original illustrations. Yeah. A little holiday gift. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, oh, that was really nice. And 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 Marlo is she was so touched that that she was in there and um she's she's very, very touched that she that Peggy sent the uh the illustration. So that's a good one. My goodness. So when you originally thought about doing this book you were by the pool it wasn't open yet you know <laughs> talking about it there was no pandemic and then when you're actually creating it we're in the middle of a pandemic how did that affect how did this whole situation here with the pandemic affect your um views on friendship and how has that impacted certain friendships it for me, it's made, I've, I value my friendships more than ever, you know, and also too, you know, it's interesting because we have to be virtual friends and there are very few of my, Susie, I've seen you once during COVID in person, right? Yeah. And so there are very few friends of mine that I've seen in person um, in the last few months. So that, you know, it's like, I, I have a renewed appreciation for, um, and a renewed gratitude for what it means, you know, to be a friend and, you know, just also like not to, you know, not to take for granted how, you know, like, I can't wait to sit and wait for Bob to open that pool again. You know what I mean? Like, I can't wait to that were simple to, things yeah, yeah. yeah like really the simple things like to be able to 
uh, you know, like do spontaneous meetups, like, hey, yeah, you know, let's go to the Whitney. Um, so, it, yeah. It, the, that arc of your friendship is, it becomes heightened and the t our time is, is all, uh, is all off. So I can't believe that I haven't actually had Peggy in my, in my kitchen or we haven't had dinner together. I mean, we see each other so often and we haven't actually been in physical contact for so long. It doesn't make any sense. And now yeah. it's been eight, nine months. It, it, it makes no sense. At the same time, there are friends that uh, I reached, I have reached out to that I have not been in touch with for a long time. That's so much more meaningful. And there are people that I am delinquent in reaching out to. And I feel very badly about that. And at this, and the book has also uh, elevated people that I haven't heard from in so long. And then you see them. And so it's just so joyful and I'm so happy. And that's something that I think I, I am, I'm so happy that that's ha that that has happened. And we appreciate that. You know what else is fun is that like friends and people we know and don't know have reached out and said, you know, like, you know, where you're my Lucy and Ethel, you know, this is my Oprah, where I'm Oprah, <laughs> she's Gail, you know, or Spike Lee and Samuel L. Jackson, you know, <laughs> they remind me of Bernie and Bird. So there is, you know, there's something to that sort of pose that, you know, one of the, um, one of the cool things about the book is it sort of reminds you, you know, you see yourself in a lot of these friendships and you see a lot of pe people, we, even us, you know, we see a lot of our friendships in the people that we have. Uh, like I was sure when I was growing up that I was Rhoda. And <laughs> Mary, like I wanted to be Mary, but I knew I was Rhoda. And I don't think you're Rhoda. I think you're totally Mary. You think I'm Mary? Oh yeah. Oh God, I'm so happy because I always think. No, I'm I think you're Mary. I think you're Mary. You're very Mary. Oh. Very what Mary. a relief! So happy. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going Mary for sure. <laughs> I can't believe we haven't discussed this. Mr. Grant, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> right before we came on, we were talking like we want to do a game show. We think there's a game show here. So there might be. There might be. Uh, you which, saw it here first, folks. Yes, which <laughs> brings me to um, if if anybody has ideas, actually, you can't really have an idea unless you were to stop by or click on the green button and got your own copy of Billions of Besties and then were to give it to your friends, families, teachers, hostesses, et cetera, and all play the game, who are you, billions of besties? So um, something that is important, do not, do not look at the button and then go shop on Amazon. You can buy cereal and detergent and windows treatments at Amazon, but you're buying your books on that green button. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a great holly gift too what a great gift to give your friends really yeah we found out like one of our friends who's hosting a uh he usually do a very big thanksgiving dinner in chicago they're doing uh they broke it down into s four small zoom dinners and they've sent books to each of the zoom dinners and so that's going to be the guess the the gift on their plate, you know, when they sit down. Oh. And um, they're going to um, describe the besties in each of the dinner groups. Isn't that fun? Oh, that's, that's fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> fun. Yeah. And also, too, we also have another friend who 
just, which I thought this was a cute idea. She um, uh, bought the books for her bridesmaids. Oh, and that's very nice yeah, that was idea. a bride made, you know, so when they announced, oh, will you be my bridesmaid? That was one of the gifts. Oh, that's, that's so sweet. That's yeah. Very sweet. Yeah. That's so very talking about dinner, if, if you could, um, if you could have dinner with any of the best friends in the book, who would you choose and why? <laughs> we have been asked this. Yeah. I'm sure. I like this question. <laughs> so we have what we believe, we have constructed what we believe is the funniest dinner party from besties in the book. So imagine this at a round, a nice big oval table. <laughs> Betty Murphy, Dave Chappelle, Peggy Panache, Susie Ahrens, Chris Rock, Tracy Morgan, Mel Brooks, Carl Reiner, may rest in peace, Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, dinner for 10. Perfect. <laughs> Isn't that a good one? <laughs> With macaroni and cheese, tomato mozzarella, and pizza pizza and starting off with champagne and caviar <laughs> <laughs> which by the way are in chapter 10 of the book yeah <laughs> what has been um what's do you, you both it's obvious even virtually meeting you that you have such a magnificent friendship what's how long have you been friends and and what's the key to your friendship We've known each other since the early 90s. So that's almost 30 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. We met we met in um the ugly conference room in New York City. <laughs> and uh in dank and dark. Uh and uh Peggy was the most entertaining funny person I had met and so at that time, I was like, I love her and I want to be friends with her because she's so funny. And then I grew to know within I mean, the next 10 minutes that she was really smart and really generous. And uh, and over the, the you know next 30 years have uh, also found that uh, Peggy Panache is the most loyal, uh, generous spirited friend that you could ever have. She has sat with me at the hospital. She has uh, cared for my children, my dogs, and uh, is the, uh, she will be the replacement wife if poo -poo -poo, anything were to happen to me. And I you cannot ask for a more honest and dear friend who you want to also you just pee from from laughing so hard <laughs> and Susie is like <clears throat> she's a badass you know like she has you know a value system and a moral compass that is um like I, I hold her in the highest regard and you know she's warm and funny and you know uh and and brave you know to go on this journey together and figure it out and and kind of not know what we're doing you know it takes a very special person who's able to do that and um you know i think that and also just you know see that it is um you know life is a gift like this is not a dress rehearsal and to, you know, she lives life to the fullest. Um, and also, you know, she is a woman's woman. She supports women. She mentors women. She lifts women up. I respect that so much. And she always has, you know, she always has from day one. So, um, 
you know, she is definitely, you know, an OG in that regard. Um, <laughs> and, you know, like you, you know, she's, she's met with my niece and my nephews and, you know, to help them, you know, realize their dreams and, you know, I'm forever You're grateful. Super Generosity, my friend, goes two ways, by the way. You know what I mean? Plus, you know, let's be honest, she has the pool. So, you know. <laughs> She's got the pool. That's it. <laughs> well, and I'm not married, seeing... so this whole built-in husband thing works for me, too. You know? <laughs> Let me tell you something. There are days that he wishes she were here and <laughs> that I was in Wisconsin. So. I know. I get to do all the fun stuff out of the work. Oh my gosh. Well, we're so lucky, aren't we? If we have in our lifetime, one or two, maybe three really good friends, ride or die friends, you know, girlfriends that are there and have been there for decades with us. And it's wonderful that you two have found that. I was going to ask what qualities you look for in a friend, but you just answered that with the lovely things you said about each other. You know, <laughs> the thing that Peggy and I uh, canvassed, uh, uh, two years ago in 2018 uh, and Peggy came out I think six weekends in a row and we were canvassing for, for uh, congressional uh, candidates we were uh, and the thing that was just it was mesmerizing to watch Peggy engage people and listen and to people who had opposing views and really listen and talk to them and then and and have the ability to have a conversation uh, and in many many times convert them i have never seen anything like it and never ever walk away and say anything negative even if they even in a, in a situation where she didn't convert we then went to the next house there were times that i walked around the block i did my thing i filled out my form i checked my boxes she would still be talking to you know sarah or stanley i'm like oh for the god say she's still because she was deter the determination and the tenacity of talking to these people, not necessarily just because she was talking and listening. I've never seen anything like it in my oh, life. But, but you know what? Back at you, sister. You so know, you did the same thing. you want to have on your team. Back, you know, Su um, Susie has, can I say who it is? <laughs> There's a client, Jonah Hill, an actor. And he says that Susie's gangster, and she is, you know, she in the way that she is, you know, she fights in the same way that she fights for her clients, her um, PR and, you know, strategy clients who are actors and performers and Hollywood people and um, social impact organizations. In the same way that she fights for them, she fights for her friends. And... You know, so to have that kind of strength and conviction is um, is rare, and also it is energizing. So I'm very fortunate. <laughs> um, how do you say my friend in French? I'm looking at the writing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Me, mon ami, mon ami, mon ami, mon ami. Aww. Well, we can move on to a few questions from our viewers. And if you still want to submit a question, you can do that in the chat box or by clicking on ask a question at the bottom of your screen. Um, the first one is in the uh, the chat box. It uh, Jennifer asks us, or you really both, there are so many formidable women in this book. Was that intentional? Yeah, it was. We, we are... I, I will say, and uh, I have I have two boys, and I have a wonderful husband. He's a wonderful partner, but I also have to say that I've been surrounded. I have very strong, darling mom, and I've had a, the great fortune of having been inspired by wonderful, strong women. I have wonderfully strong uh, female friends 
and uh, who have who are my soulmates and it is we we intentionally put women in the book who um who have been role models and it was important to us to have a number of formidable women in the book from all generations to have lizzo was as important as having uh gloria and marlo and helen keller we we that pair was in, important so yes now i will say we do have a lot of amazing men yes in the book so you know we have nelson mandela and bishop desmond tutu and like susie said uh, martin luther king Junior and Congressman John Lewis. We also have, you know, John Stewart and Stephen Colbert. Um, you know, Spike Lee and Samuel L. Jackson, Ernie and Bert, <laughs> Snoopy, and, <laughs> Snoopy and Charlie Brown. I yeah. know. But also, you know, like David Bowie and Lou Reed and Eric Clapton and George Harrison. Yeah, we have you know, Sal McCartney and and Liv Tyler, and like they're they're. Formidable. Yeah. And, and also like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. You and know, and Bill it, Gates' mom made him meet Warren Buffett. It wasn't, that was, that was, she was like, you're meeting him. <laughs> and also, you know what's fun about them is um, when they get together, they go to Dairy Queen together. So I drew them with little Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. And they get, you know, they get blizzards. <laughs> <laughs> we have and we have oh Pat and Susie. Yeah. You know, talking about strong women. Yes. So, yeah. So, so I, and Venus. And Venus is the powerhouse of that, of that friendship, couple sisters. Mm -hmm. So... But yes, we, we wanted to have formidable women. We're formidable women. Hmm. <laughs> um, who were some besties that didn't make the final cut? Well, and again, they're in the parking lot. Right. So this is a, this was a this was a, a difficult choice, and uh, Justin Timberlake and Jimmy Fallon didn't make it. Mm. And it was really. It was a wardrobe situation. It was a wardrobe malfunction because really? we wanted them in very badly. And so Susie wrote the origin story. I drew them wearing, um, um, they used to do this bit on Saturday Night Live where they would dress up in like wrapping paper and they were wrappers. Yes. So I drew them in those outfits. The origin story was different. We were way past a deadline and I didn't have time to redraw them. So we had to park them. We had to park them. Yeah. So that again, if you click the button enough times. Purchase the book here. <laughs> or La Casa, our only indie bookseller people will come out of the parking lot. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Volume two and, and the board the game. The parking lot is the board game. Yeah. <laughs> I love that idea. I love the idea of a board game. Billions of besties, the board game. <laughs> or the cocktail napkin. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. What a beautiful napkin that with the illustrations. Mm -hmm. Pajamas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where you <laughs> well, if anyone has any final questions, now is the time. You can type them into your chat box or click on ask a question. Also, if you're we're multi-streaming on YouTube tonight, if you're watching on YouTube or re-watching on YouTube, uh, there are links in the description if you would like to buy the book from the Doylestown Bookshop, and I suggest that you do. We have it in store. It's also worth mentioning that we do have um, curbside pickup. We have curbside pickup at both of our stores. We have a store in Peddler's Village, the Lahaska Bookshop, too. So 
Um, if you're more comfortable with that, you could do that. We'll ship the book to you. We'll do whatever needs to happen and we'll get you your book. And it is important to, uh, to support independent bookstores. It is something that you make memories with your friends. You make memories with your children. You make memories with your family. And we cannot let the independent booksellers go the way of the copper penny. And it is one of- Where did the copper penny go? Well, because copper pennies are going to go away. And if you, you know, the other thing too is, is, is um, like Doris, Doris Town Bookshop, you know, it's like the heart and soul of a community. And we want to make sure that that is energized and um, supported and loved. So you can get the book next door, get a sandwich go on a bench and have a really nice day. And we hope the book will make you smile. I'm sure it will. It made me smile for sure. Well, we don't have any more questions that came in. So I'm afraid we'll need to wrap this up, but it's been so much fun. It's been so much fun. I hope when the second book comes out and I have no doubt that it will, and we'll see Justin Timberlake and Jimmy Fallon in there. You guys can come to uh, Pennsylvania (laughs) and visit us in the store in person. And it'll be so much fun. To Susie's house in the pool. In the pool. (laughs) It all comes back to the pool. (laughs) We'll work in a summer (laughs) piece. That sounds good. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much for giving us your time tonight. This was so much fun. Thank you for having us. We really enjoyed it. Of course. Stay healthy, of course. everybody. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Yes. And have a really wonderful Thanksgiving and Hanukkah and Christmas and all, all holidays that you may or may not celebrate. You too. All right. Thanks, ladies. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye.